painter Willie Bo Richardson shares his experience of the moment. The artists that I'm very attracted to and the, the type of art that I want to make is the kind of art that would have a physical effect on a person. And we know for a fact that color does change people's perspective on things. And it sounds really simple, but I had this epiphany when I was watering the garden and it occurred to me that the rainbow has its own laws and rules. And in a really simple way, you could just say that the colors are in a certain order. It's not that anything goes, that the colors really are that. And in that same way, gravity has a certain order. Gravity basically points to the center of the Earth. So my goal is to, to work within these, these real rules, these real laws, and to understand my painting's context in those rules and laws. And it's, and it's actually a little bit more profound and abstract than just what is the order of the colors, but, but the first clue is, is that you have red and blue and in the center is yellow and then green and orange. And, and then where does black fit into that? Copernicus and Galileo came along and this idea that we're not the center of the universe, that, that the Earth revolves around the sun and not the other way around. In 1890, it was psychology and sociology. Well, today, in contemporary science, we're talking about quantum physics. And what it points to is that we're living in a, in a reality which is probably more like a hologram than a reality, or that it's more like a dream, that things are not solid and real, that things are, are changing, that matter is energy, and that energy is mutable. Throughout art history, the artists have reflected the most abstract levels of thinking. So what I'm actually trying to do is experience that, you know, have, have a, an actual experience, and then transfer that into the paint. And what's beautiful about painting, and I think it's actually a really incredible technology that's totally relevant today, is that it does everything that you want it to in that moment. So you have the materials, you have the artist, and you have the action, and they're all coming together instantaneously. It's also a, a call and response. So the materials speak back and I have to listen. Colors have their own flavor, their own message, and when colors are put next to each other, they also have their own flavor, their own message. I feel like if I'm listening and open to the moment, I get the flavor of the day, and the flavor of the day is what these colors are coming together. It's very particular to that moment and to what is sort of, you could say, brought up on shore for that moment, right? And to me, those colors are what's being brought up on shore. That's what I'm attracted to. So a lot of it is about really knowing the difference between what I want to do and what I should do. There's sort of micro and macro levels of failure that can happen. You know, so, so the biggest fear of all would be that everything I'm doing is wrong. And I began to see that as just another emotion and that it's actually these emotions are, are the fuel for what I'm using. The goal is not to leave these experiences behind. The, the goal is you know, not to sort of find this perfect reality of, of like only happiness. You know? The goal is, is to be aware of these emotions and to work with these emotions. To truly fail would be to stop searching, I think. So far, I, I have more material to go through.
When we're talking about having real laws and real rules to follow, you know, there's the saying, you have to know the laws before you break them, or you have to know the rules before you break them. At the same time, I can't break the law of gravity. And when I'm painting, it's, it's me plus paint plus gravity. And I have tried to break this, you know, I have tried all kinds of other things, but the fact is, is that drips flow down and half of what I'm using is a drip. And so this is, again, why I keep finding myself into these vertical strokes. So for me, it's this really kind of funny dynamic and this very specific uh, limitation that I found myself in. We can fool ourselves in thinking that anything is possible when actually there are laws of cause and effect. The titles of my paintings are um, completely based on this idea. A lot of the titles of my paintings are Valkyries. They're these inspiring muses. You don't want to cross them in the wrong way. You don't want to go against their, their will or their wishes because you're going to bring a lot of trouble. And I think that that's absolutely true with, with um, creativity and the creative process. It's our own fixed ideas, it's our, our own sort of preconceptions that are creating these limitations. And so the creative process is actually a really simple thing, which is let go of your preconceptions, let go of your fixed ideas. And this actually ties into this, this question of when is a painting finished? The tendency actually is to overfinish paintings. And for me personally, I can remember the first painting where I maybe really finished it and the question was more like wow can I do that can I get away with that like that is not finished you know can I do that but everything is there everything necessary and sufficient is there you know it conveys a message it holds together every stroke is important I mean for me personally I have certain paintings that when I think about them I hear music, I picture myself driving across the Golden Gate Bridge, and I can think of specific friends and things in my lives that are happening. You know, that it really conjures real things, you know, real experiences, you know, and that it, it ties in directly with, um, with my dreams and aspirations. I think that the only test is really the test of time. Thank you.